Often these days when you're working on the sequence, you need to output more than one aspect ratio of that sequence, maybe for a social media site or a mobile phone or something of that sort. I've got a sequence here that's of course in regular broadcast 16 by 9 This is a regular HD sequence in practice. And I want to create myself a 1080 pixel square version of it for a social media site. Now there's a whole variety of different ways to achieve this. But one way that I've hit on that I think is uh, very convenient and shows off some interesting features of Media Composer is what I'm going to show you in this little session. First of all, Media Composer for a long time has had a feature uh, available called target masking. The way that this works is that as part of your project setup, if I go to the preferences here in Media Composer, and the first tab is the, are the preferences of the format of the project in which you're working. In there, there's a section called mask margins. And if I click in there, you can see that you can pick from a variety of different aspect ratios to mask down or crop down your sequence. Um, this is much more commonly used to letterbox or pillar box a sequence to uh, some film aspect ratio. So for example, if I choose two, three, five to one, it says, okay, you need to crop 12 and, 12 and a bit percent off the top and bottom of the frame to do so. Well, I can apply that and say, okay. And uh, you can see that in my case, immediately my output on my uh, record monitor is being masked down to uh, that aspect ratio. And that's because actually I've got set under a right click on that window, the target mask. And I'm saying, okay, mask to black uh, within that window. Now, if I don't want it, I can choose no mask uh, and work in regular uh, full aperture 16 by nine. Or if I choose black mask, then I'm letterboxing down the output. When I go to export the sequence, if I choose export in here, uh, you can see in the options menu, I have the option to enable the mask margins. So if I check that box, my sequence exports in regular 16 by nine with the, with the mask attached. Okay, so I'm going to use that target mask feature for my own purposes to make my 1080 pixel square version of this sequence. So my first task is to create the correct target mask. So I'll go back to the preferences. In here, in the mask margins, one-to-one uh, -one is not an available option, but it does allow me via this custom dialog at the bottom to put my own numbers in there. Well, a little bit of maths will tell you that in order to do a, a square, you can leave the top and bottom masked at 0% uh, and simply mask the left and right by 21.87%. I'll leave you to work that one out for yourselves. Once I've entered those numbers though, I can say apply that, okay. And now you can see I'm looking at my uh, square output. Now immediately I've got a problem with this, I guess, in that the shots are very likely to need reframing for best results. In my sequence, I've got a spare video track on video track three here. Uh, and onto that track, I'm going to drop an effect from the effects palette. So in the reformat uh, effects filters section, I'm going to grab the pan and scan effect and drag and drop it onto that track. Then if I head out into my effects workspace, in the effects workspace, I'm going to use the feature of the pan and scan effect called subdivide. And what that's going to do is it's going to break this otherwise continuous effect up into separate segments based on the cuts that are visible on the tracks beneath. Because each shot is very likely to need individually reframing. So I'm going to select the track immediately beneath the pan and scan effect. And I'm going to click subdivide. And you can see that it breaks the pan and scan effect up into separate instances based on the cuts that it can see on the track beneath. Now here and there, I might need to do a little bit of additional repair work, I guess. But in the main, I'll, I've now got separate effects I can work on to reframe each segment in the timeline. Problem is, this isn't quite the right effect. It wants to reformat my sequence from one aspect ratio, typically uh, 16 by nine, to uh, a different aspect ratio. 
and unfortunately, one to one is not on the is not on the agenda. So I'm going to so having got this far, I'm going to replace this effect with regular resize effects. And the way to do that easily is simply to park on the first one, use select to the right to select all, and then go and double click on a resize effect. Yeah, the resize effect replaces all of those pan and zooms, and now I'm in good shape to go. So coming back to the first item, yeah, I can just reposition uh, this lady so that she sits nicely in the middle of the frame. And I guess I can either do that by using the exposition slider. It's going to be a bit fierce if I do this, but if I hold the shift key as I go, I can do it in a rather more controlled sort of fashion. There we go, shift drag. You have to get nice fine control there. Or I could do it. Let me go to the next one and uh, show you show you on the next one. Yeah, okay, this shot isn't bad. Again, it needs to slide a little bit to the left. If I click on the picture, if I hold the shift key and click on the picture and drag, then the first movement that I make defines the direction that I, the aspect that I'm locked to. So I can't drag vertically, I can only drag horizontally. You do need to be a little bit careful, do a, a swift sort of click drag to make sure you head off in the right direction. If you do find that you've accidentally strayed, in fact, I did, look, I've put four and a half units of Y shift in there accidentally. Of course, you can just go and correct that. All the time I'm viewing my sequence, of course, through the target mask, so I'm seeing the final output. But I guess when you first go to a shot, uh, you may think to yourself, well, I wonder what else there is that I could potentially use within that shot. Is there anything interesting on the left or the right of frame that I'm not seeing? And a useful feature of target mask is this ability. If I go into target mask mode, I can go into mixed black mode so that I can see the areas that are being cropped off on either side. Another piece of Leslie here. So we'll just frame that across, like so. Of course, if I keep coming back to the same framing repeatedly, I can use the same effect. So in this case, uh, now I've set that one, I could simply drag and drop that to the next time I'm gonna see Leslie, which is there, um, and, uh, and get that done in double quick time. If I turn off the target masking, Looking down at video track two, I still have the original shot in the original framing. And looking up on video track three, I've got the modified shot in the modified framing. So I've kind of got the best of both worlds here. I've got essentially outputs that are suitable for two aspect ratios sitting in one sequence. Once I'm done though, I'll need to actually export the sequence in the two aspect ratio. Well, exporting in 16 by nine is no problem, of course. It's just a regular export. The 1080 square takes a little bit more thought. To do this, I've created myself a ProRes 1080 square preset. Let me show you what's in here. If I click Options, it's set to export 1080 square and it's set to crop the image down to 1080 square. Now, because it's going to crop the image, of course, I need to make sure that I export from the top track. I need to export the track that's been repositioned to match. So I'm monitoring the top track. Um, I'm staying in regular 709 color space, by the way, and uh, the details of the compression, I'm doing custom compression and in the format options. Yeah, you can see that I'm exporting regular ProRes 422 with uh, regular um, uncompressed sound to go with it. So I can say OK to this. So I can just click Save and then save the sequence out to a suitable location. I'll save it out to my desktop. OK, once the export's done, I can open it in QuickTime Player if I want to. Here's the actual file itself opened in QuickTime Player. 